Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy's Doodles. I can't look like that the entire time. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 11th of April, 2019, and this is episode 340. 340. That's a lot. Yeah. We'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers and a big hi to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. Hope you enjoy the show. Yeah, I mean, we have so much stuff to talk about today. My table is piled, piled high with stuff to show you. Mine isn't. Yes, I know because I have all the stuff and you don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, oh, we, did, uh, um, we didn't even say, uh, nobody introduced themselves in the Ravelry group this week, Dammy. So if oh, somebody no. has, has not done that, what should they do and why? You should join our group on Ravelry and introduce yourself in our introductions thread because you'll get a shout out on the next episode and be able to participate in all our owls and giveaways. That's right. Well, with that, I think we are ready to get started. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about what is on our needles. So what's on your needles or what are you creatively doing? I didn't really work on my straightforward mitts, so here's another project I did for my design class. Um, hold on, somebody's knocking on the door. I will be back. <laughs> if I had a recorder, I could play the Jeff Birthday theme on it because I know how to do that now. It is ingrained into my muscle memory forever. I had to learn it for the play I was in. I lied. It was next door. <laughs> it sounded like Pink even was like, well, who's knocking on our door? Wow. So tell us about it. It's values. It is appropriately okay. titled Three Value Scales. Okay. And so the first one was done in pencil just to represent grayscale. And the second, we were supposed to do some form of stippling or cross hatching or scumbling. And so I chose stippling because I hate myself. And then and if the somebody last... doesn't wait, wait, wait. If somebody doesn't know what stippling is, can you explain it? Stippling, let's see. See those little dots? Mm hmm That is all that stippling is. You just do it more and more and more. Oh wow. Wow. I kind of cheated for the last squirt on it because I almost had it all the way filled in with all the black dots. But then I was like, you know what? My wrist kind of hurts. I'll just take my thickest um, black ink pen and color and the rest. Because the last square is supposed to be solid black anyway. I, I affirm that plan. And the last one, we were just supposed to choose some type of symbol or shape. And then okay. increase it until it was all the way black. What symbol did you choose? It's a Libra symbol. Cool. Did you know, did you know what, do you know what Hogwarts character is, is most like our astrology symbol of Libra? Umbridge? Nope. <laughs> Remus. Nice. Yes, we were discussing this at Knitting Group last night. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but... Danny and I are both Libras, so I don't really pay attention to astrology, but it was funny. So, what are you working on? Um, I actually only have three things that I'm working on. Only three? Who are you? I know. So first up is my 10 stitch zigzag blanket, which is a free pattern by Frankie Brown. It's on US 4, 3.5 mil needles, and I finished the 66 stripe which was All About Yarn Sparkle Owl in the Geeky Girls Knit Turns 5 colorway. So that means I'm 94% done. Can you hear that? That was my timer to tell me to take the ice pack off my foot. Thank you, Siri. Um, 
Okay, wait. So the 67 stripe is Ginger's hand dyed Chiba sock in the Jason Free colorway, which is the Outlander colorway that I originally asked Jess of Ginger Twist Studio to, to dye for me when I wanted to, when, uh, who all was doing it? Knitmore Girls and some others were doing an Outlander along. Um, so I only have four stripes left. Four. How do you do four? I don't know, I was just saying, okay. I had muted myself because there was a very loud ambulance and fire truck outside. So I, I only have four stripes left. Yeah, okay, well then now let me talk about the ice pack because somebody's gonna ask. So, um, yeah. I have hypermobility along with my multitude of other health issues and especially my right ankle turns very easily it kind of like folds under and so i thought this was only about six months ago but apparently it was almost a year ago i had i had had that happen and hurt and everything and i went and had x-rays and they were like it's not broken or anything and so i just you know dealt with it as a sprain and then a few weeks ago it's it just really started hurting really bad um and so i had my just normal I have to see my doctor every three months because I'm on controlled substances. And so I have to, um, to deal with all that. So I was like, I'm going to the doctor anyway. I'll just wait and talk to her. So I did. And they did more x-rays and apparently there was a fracture that we didn't know about an old one. So apparently last year when this happened, I must've fractured it. So hmm. but there's no, there's no new fracture. Like there's not a, a, a brand new fracture. So I'm going to have to have, PT, physical therapy. But in the meantime, when I'm walking on it, I have the same brace that I used when I sprained it, um, which is like just one of those like slip on ones um, that you wear under your socks. So I'm supposed to use that and I'm supposed to be icing it for 20 minutes and then letting my foot return to normal temperature and then icing it again. So that is the story of what happened to me. <sighs> frustrating but I'm working on another project so look into this bag hold on I'm hard to get it to where you can see it all look into this bag you will see eight colorways with a ninth colorway here so what in the world could I be doing with all of these? Well, I am making the Hubs 2019 birthday socks. So I'm using my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern um, that you can get on Ravelry, and I'm using US one and a half, two and a half mil needles. So um, I had all these leftovers because, and even some of these I've made, I've, I've put them in the zigzag blanket and still have lots of leftovers. But none of them on their own were enough to do a pair of socks. So I got, I, I ran this by the Dr. Hub and was like, how do you feel about this? Would you wear them? Would, look at all these colorways. And he was good with it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually working on these socks concurrently, but not on the same needle. On two pairs of um, nine inch circulars, affectionately known as zoom zoom needles by me. So I did one color. I'm not going to tell y'all all the colorways because there's nine colors. If you want to see all the colorways, you can go to my Ravelry page. I've already posted them all. Okay. So I did just one color for the toe. And then I, what I'm doing is I'm changing every 10 rows, but like this first colorway I used here, uh, is self striping. And so it looks different on each one. And then, um, this is leftover from my nanny swimming sweater last year. And then I've done 10 rows of this next one. And I'm working on that 10 rows over here. And I made, I made the Dr. Hub socks out with this. Maybe for Christmas? At some point I made socks for the Dr. Hubs. So that's what I'm doing. So the reason I'm doing them concurrently is because I'm going to have to repeat some of the colors. And I didn't want to risk running out. So, uh, by working on them concurrently, just, you know, I did one toe, then I did the other toe and then I did 10 rows and then 10 rows and just back and forth. 
and then that way I'll have a they won't be matchy matchy because I've, several of them are, are self striping but they will be Frankenstein socks and they're fun it's really fun to be like I've never done it this way where I've done I've done two at a time socks but on a long circular I've never done two at a time like this and it's fun it's really fun so I'm working on that and then the other thing I'm working on is my my favorite murder mystery wrap on US two and a half three mil and US four three point five mil needles using suburban stitcher sock in the triflers we've got applied colorway and I it, it, I'm making good progress I, I've got to get it done and blocked so that we can do photographs um, because when I designed it, so the pattern, if you haven't heard me talk about it before, is it's a long rectangular wrap, but it's done in two pieces and then joined in the middle. So I had done one full panel of it as I was designing, and now I'm just submitting the second panel because I didn't want to do them at the same time and then be like, oh, I don't like that session. I have to rip it out on both of them. So it was mm -hmm. just a design process for me. So. Um, and that is everything I'm working on, which means I do have some FOs. So we probably should move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about your finished projects. Three of them. Three of them. Okay, first up. <laughs> bollocks. I finished my bollocks. Oops, cross stitch. I know. I can't decide if I want to see, so I can't decide if I want to do a regular frame or if I want to try to put it into a hoop, but the problem is that it's wider than it's tall. Before. Yeah, I don't think it would fit into a hoop at all. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think that's going to work, so I think I'm going to have to do a frame. Mm -hmm. So, but I love it. It's done and I actually did start another project I've had this project that I got on uh, it's a kit that I got on clearance ages ago from Joann's and it's in a embroidery hoop and it says live simply and it's an embroidery project which this is my first ever embroidery project so I, I barely started on it but I I was like I've got to get focused and get the uh, my favorite murder sample finished and so I put it on hold until I can get back on track where I need to be. So there's that. The second thing I finished I don't actually have in my hands but I have pictures. So I finished up the third pair of socks that I knit for my friend Mel. I used my French vanilla cappuccino sock pattern and I'm on I did use I used US one and a half, two and a half mil needles and the yarn is Patton's Croy socks in the Clover Colors colorway, which that's one of the colorways for that's in the bag for dark for the Dr. Hubbs Frankenstein socks. Um so I I I gave them to her and she has not wanted to take them off. She is in love. She has to take them off to wash them. I know. I know. But she can wear hand knit socks for half of the week now. <laughs> for three point five days. For three days. <laughs> and then the last thing is my preemie hat for this week, which this one is not so preemie. Um, so this is number fourteen for the year, and I'm using my top down uh, preemie hat pattern on Ravelry that you can find for free there. This is on US 6's four mil needles, and the yarn is Cascade Yarn Specific Chunky Multis in the, is it Hyacinth? Is that how you say Hyacinth. it? Hyacinth. Okay, Hyacinth colorway and Karen Simply Soft in the Gray Heather colorway. Um, there is, too, in retrospect, there's too much of a difference in the weight of these two yarns, even though they were right close to each other. Um, because I'm doing hats for Click for Babies, which we talked about last week. Link in the show notes if you want to know more info. Um, so I was like, I was trying to make this purple, this hyacinth go further, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because I just don't think I have anything that really truly matches weight wise with it. So, um, and I had two skeins of this hyacinth. So I'm going to just do several all hyacinth colored hats and use it up that way. And then I have two other colorways of purple that I can use 
and make it make it work. So you know, it's it's what Apollo would have wanted. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's all the three things that I have finished this week. Which you know what? what? I, finished, I finished thirty projects this year. Wow. I know. Fourteen of the fourteen of them preemie hats. Hmm. So. All right. Well, I think we are ready to move on to our very, very, very full yummy section. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies. What are yummies, Sammy? Yummies are our current favorite things. Things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. yummies. And, and, and I have multitude. So first up, so do y'all remember when I went to Madrona and I got some of these really cool needle wranglers? I had, yes. this, I, had this, I have this size and I have the next size up. So this size will, hold, will do for like, I think it's for zero to threes. And then the next size up, I think, is for like four, fours to nines, maybe. Uh, anyway, so I got orange ones, which orange is my second favorite color, but not this bright of an orange, more of an autumnal orange, but orange. So I got these. But she told me when I got them that they were planning to expand to more colors. And one of them is pink. And so she posted about them, and I did a special order with her to go ahead and get some in my hands. So here we go. So I got two more, two of the small ones, and three of the bigger ones. Looks kind of, kind of more purpley pink. Yes, I thought that at first too, but when I looked on her website for the, for the purple ones, this is definitely like a magenta pink. Versus mm -hmm. like the bright purple. Because at first I was like, oh, they sent me the wrong one. So I went on the website and looked and I was like, oh, no, they didn't send me the wrong one. It's just more of a magenta dark pink. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited for these. Uh, there's a link in the show notes if you want to get some. They're from the Tempestry Project. Oh, here we go. I can tell you the sizes because this little card says minis are for US zeros to threes. Standard, which is this size are for US 4s to 11s, and I did not get any of the jumbo, which are for US 13s to 19s. Chunky. So, um, I, was, I have not started using these because I wanted to show y'all, but now I can use these. I, I love them. I love them more than the, um, the tubes that you stick your needles in, which are awesome, and I've used for a number of years, but I love these even more. So you can see how you put them through. What are you doing this for? That's what they look like to me. Yeah. Yeah, they go. Like alligators? Yeah. I bought pink alligators. Uh, you bought my, my cat alligators? I, I might have to make that the title of the episode. In which... I bought pink alligators. I'm writing that down because I'll forget. But you bought my cat alligators? No. The color pink. Where is my cat alligators? My, <laughs> the cat alligator is sleeping on the couch. <laughs> okay. Secondly, I got a sweet parcel in the post with this gorgeous card. And this is glitter. Can you see the glitter? Yeehaw. I didn't even notice it at first because there's a note on the back and I was just like, oh. and then I like was setting aside. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going on my bulletin board. So this is from Adore Knit on Etsy, but it's a gift from Jessica who is Silver Luna 2112 on Ravelry. And she sent it to me kind of as a congratulations for the My Favorite Murder Kits going so well. And actually, the lady included a couple extras. So this is one of the extras. It's a sand dollar stitch marker. Isn't that cute? Oui. I'm keeping that one. And then I'm not going to pull these out because I will end up with rings everywhere. But this one has um, a teapot and a pink cup with flowers on it. And then pink and silver. Uh, rings. 
Mm -hmm. And then this one has a white and pink flower and shades of pink rings. She told me that one of them was called pink is my signature color. I'm thinking it's this one over this one. But mm -hmm. I was like, I messaged her and I was like, how did you know I needed more rings? Because I have quite a, I've got several um, of these, of these ring type, which I really like, but over time, the glue that holds the beads in place over the join loosens up after you use them for a long time. Yeah. So, but she also sent another set, which I'm not going to pull out, but you'll be able to see a picture of later. And actually the lady sent this cute little spring chick as extra. So I put it in with this. This is, a, this is April showers. It's an umbrella ring May flowers with purple and green and silver rings. And this is a prize for our Shiki Spring Owl. So I took mm -hmm. them out and, and took a picture. So you'll see that in the, in the, when we talk about the Shiki Spring Owl. So, but thank you so much to Jessica. That was just so sweet. And I was just like, how did she know I needed new rings? Because I did. So, yay. So, and thanks for the donation for a prize for the, for the owl as well. We got our Knit crate box. I love the tissue paper they used. Very cute. And this month, we got a the ladybug colorway. Because this month's theme is insects. So this is their Audine Wool's Psy DK. In the ladybug colorway it's 85 percent merino wool 15 percent cashmere and it's dk weight 100 grams 302 yards 276 meters very pretty and the here's the, bo the booklet that came so the uh, so actually the theme was entomology so they also had this blue really blue um Ooh that's very pretty called leaf eater. And then they also had sock box uh, for their sock box and for their pop-up shop. So the patterns this month, uh, the crochet pattern is the chrysalis pattern by Liliana Boos Chimelko. So this is the crochet pattern for this month. Very pretty. It's done on USG six four millimeter crochet hook. The knit pattern is called Canopy and it's by Destiny Meyer. Very pretty. And it's done on US 7's 4.5 mil needles. And then the sock pattern for this month is the, which I actually kind of want to make these because they're freaking awesome, is the Undergrass pattern by Stephanie Voyer. Look at that. I know, it's so beautiful. It's done on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles. Um, yeah. It's so pretty. I might have to do those because they're just really awesome. Except for it's got a um, heel flap and gusset, which is not my favorite thing to do. And uh, in, then in the pop-up shop, this yarn and some patterns done by it. Next month's theme, which I'm super excited about, Farmer's Market. Look at this one right here. How pretty is that? I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what they come up with. So Knit Crate has generously given us this box. We don't pay for this. They send it to us for our review and a lot of times we put the yarn into our prize box and use it as prizes for y'all. So, but they've given us a coupon code. It's all capital letters, geeky, G-E-E-K-Y, and the number's two zero. So geeky 20. To get 20% off your first order, it will only work to discount the first month of a recurring monthly subscription, and it will also work on any of their shop items. So, link is in the show notes if you want to take advantage of that. We got a parcel from the lovely folks over at Barmaids who do the Lolo Bar, mm -hmm. but 
they sent us giveaway stuff. So stay tuned for later in the episode because we're giving away three different prizes and it's amazing. So it smells so good. Everything smells yummy. So we will talk about that in the review and giveaway, but I wanted to mention it there because it's yummy. It's amazing. So Dammy, I've, I've shared all of these yummies. Do you have any yummies this week? My cat. Your cat is sleeping. My cat. Does that mean I'm supposed to go get her? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. She looks so grumpy. She was sleeping so cute. Oh. I know, honey. Look, right here. Look, it's Danny. <laughs> Look, Danny. Mm. Look right Danny. Mm. Right there, Danny. Okay, I grumpy. I was sleeping so cute, Dammy, and you made Mama wet me up. <laughs> Her is precious. Her gotcha day was this week. That's yummy. Yeah, that was. We had it for a whole year. And she's had <laughs> us for a whole year. <laughs> Do you want to say anything to the people or to Dammy? You sent me a text last night and said, yeah. That was quite ah. funny. I, um, I did a, a voice text to Dammy of Pink meowing. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was giving her kisses and that's what was, what was making her meow. Oh. <laughs> I just like that. She's like that. <laughs> okay, Pink, do you want to say anything else to Dammy? Mm. No, I am not a performance animal. I'm a cute baby. I'm a cute baby. <laughs> do you want down? Do you want to go back to bed? She wants to go back to her bed on the couch. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Pink Pearl, Gotcha Day was this week, and you're going to see a show. What show are you seeing tonight? I'm seeing Marie Dancing Still at the Fifth Avenue Theater tonight. Okay, and what are you seeing tomorrow night? I am seeing She Stoops to Conquer at Seattle Shakespeare. So you'll be able to tell us about both of these shows next week. Yes. Yes. I wish I was over there because I would go with you. Um, okay. Well, I don't have anything else unless you do other than our normal stuff. Yummies are I'm wearing pom-pom earrings because they're freaking awesome. Pom-poms rock. Um, okay. Let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it, Dammy? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month. So take a look at the prompts for that day. Take a picture related to it and post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. Yes, April is the numbers month, which you can interpret like literally like today's the 11th, like 11 stitches, 11 inches, 11 rows, 11 stitch markers, 11... 11 toes. Okay, On you could pack. do that. On uh, your pack. <laughs> Or you can totally do it the way I've been doing it of today is the 11th and this happened. So, uh, Dammy, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. Yay! 
So it's never too late to join in. You just take a look at the prompts list, which this month is very easy because it's the date. You interpret it however you wish. We're very cheater friendly on this. And then yours might get chosen to be featured both on social media as well as in the podcast and show notes. Um, if you are participating in GGK Crafty Pad and you have a private Instagram account, you need to make sure that Dammy, Dammy's Doodles, is following you. So otherwise we cannot see your photos. Mm. Um, and we've been jokingly including hashtag GGK Kitty Pad because so many knitters, crafters have cats. And so it was a joke to begin with, but now it's been fun to have GGK Kitty Pad picks. And you can click on that uh, hashtag on Instagram and see like all of them, all the cats. It's fabulous. Okay, Dammy, we have a couple of upcoming events. Well, one event that you and I both are attending and another event that I'm attending. So do you want to talk to us about this one? Yes, he stole a postcard. Um, okay. SPU Theater is putting on A Wrinkle in Time. It's an adaptation by Tracy Young. And so come see it. It's really fun. It's going to be from April the 25th to the 27th and May the 2nd to the 4th. And there are two two show days. So two matinees. Yes. The 27th and the 4th. And I, when I was looking to link this up in the show notes, it's not going to have an intermission. And it's, it's an hour and 45 minute show. Spicy. Yeah. That's so, a, a difference from um, my show. That was like three hours. So we might actually catch the ferry and not have to wait till 1250 <laughs> and then come and record the next day because uh, Dammy and the Dr. Hubs and I are actually going to a preview show of it before it officially opens. For VIPs only. Yes. AKA and people who be, worked on the show. <laughs> and we get to be VIPs. So, And then the Pacific, I got a postcard for this. The Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl is May the 2nd through the 5th. And there are 10 vendors, but one of them is a pop-up shop in another yarn shop. So there's nine locations to go to. And they also released the passport that, so that you can print it out because then you get it um, like stamped at every location and then you can enter into a, a, some big raffles if you go to all the shops. So mm. I think I'm going to be doing it on the Friday, the third, but I'm not a hundred percent yet. So I will let you know when I know we still have a few weeks before that happens. So if you want more info on either Wrinkle in Time or the Yarn Crawl, the links are in our show notes. All right, Dammy, I think we are ready to move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. What are you reading, Dammy? I am kind of reading Dracula by Bram Stoker. I'm more um, reading my textbook for design class and okay. um, exercises for French. Yeah. 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 But I'm also um, reading The Glass Scientist, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Kachungo. Good job. Uh, so I assume with all of this reading, especially the reading you're doing for school, that you're getting at least 15 minutes a day. We. Oui. So what am I referring to? You're referring to the April, May, June RAL read along. Yes. So this is a uh, challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day. I don't care what you read as long as you're reading. And there, we're doing quarterly things where you do one post in the F in the finish line thread and edit it as well as a year-long challenge to which you earn entries by doing the quarterly challenges mm -hmm. last week we announced the January February March 
ebook and pattern winners. And I've heard from some of them winners, but not all. So if you participated oh. in January, February, March, you might want to go listen to last week's episode. Watch last week's episode because you might be a winner. Okay. Okay. So all the details for this is in our um, show notes as well as in the Ravelry threads. Okay. So I'm going to talk about what I'm reading now, Dammy. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm reading The Road Back to You, An Enneagram Journey to Self-Discovery by Ian Morgan Cron and Susan Stabil. I read Type 3 this week and listened to the Sleeping at Last podcast episode about threes. I am very excited for the next mm -hmm. chapter because it is the type I am. I'm a type 4. Dammy's a type 4. My sweet friend Mel is a type 4. And I've learned so much about Enneagram and then this, I'm just so excited to give it to my type in this book. So I'm also continuing to read When the Heart Waits by Sue Monk Kidd. Fiction wise, I'm rereading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is book number four in the series by JK Rowling. I'm really reading that along with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. The, so I got caught up. I told you all that about on Swish and Flick, so I'm having to wait for weeklies now. So this week's uh, episode was about the aftermath of Harry's name coming out of the Goblet of Fire. Did you put their name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry? Yes. So, yes, so that's the chapter that I read this week. Okay. I also read An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Buchanan, which it was a thriller, and it was very intense. So, yeah. Wait, no. I think I'm confusing it with the other one I read. Oh, dear. <laughs> what, what, what? See, this is what happens when you read multiple books a week. In a week's yeah. time, you, you, mix, that. you mix them together. But I do, I read a lot. Did I tell you, so the Dr. Hubs went to pick up some books on hold for me this week. And um, I'm going to tell you this story while I'm searching for this book on Goodreads. And uh, I had five books on hold and the librarian was like, There's, this is five books how are you, how is she going to be able to read them all? And he was like, eh, she'll probably have them read by the weekend. <laughs> oh, okay. This one was the psychological thriller. Yes. Mm -hmm. Psychological suspense and obsession. That's that. That's the one that I was thinking of. And then I read an amazing book that I highly recommend called First Impressions, a novel of old books, Unexpected Love, and Jane Austen by Charlie Lovett. And it goes back and forth between present time with a girl who works in a bookshop and knows about rare books and everything, and Jane Austen in the late 1790s-ish, 1794 maybe. It was so good. I highly recommend it. If you are a fan of Jane Austen, I think you will love this book. And I've actually got his other book on hold right now to pick up. So I'm interested to see if I like his other book as well. Um, I'm reading the Anna Pigeon series by Nevada Barr. I finished book 12 and I'm reading book 13 right now. The Lies We Told by Camilla Way. This was like, holy crap. Yeah, it was very much a... Uh, a thriller, whodunit, what are these secrets, intense, yeah. And then I read a book recommended by a friend from Knitting Group. Uh, she recommended this book called The Book Jumper. I don't know how to say the name that it's by. Dami, can you attempt to assist? Uh, Mickdield Glazier? Yes, yeah, so this was translated. And, you know, sometimes when books are translated, it loses something. This book did not. This book was amazing. It's about uh, people that can, like, jump into actual book, the story of the that's happening in the book, and their job is to help protect it and make sure nothing changes. 
really good. And I had the physical copy and it had the, what do you call it? Those, the rough edges. Do you know what I'm talking about? It, yeah, I don't know what they're called. I don't know what they're called either, but they're amazing. And it was so awesome. Highly recommend that one. And then I also uh, finished reading book seven of the Magical Cats Mystery Series by Sophie Kelly. So that is all of my reading for this week, which was a lot. Okay, let me have a drink of water and then I will speak to you of TV and movies. Are you ready? I watched a Hallmark movie, True Love Blooms. It was, it was, a, it was good. The Hubs, mm -hmm. the Dr. Hubs and I watched this movie that I know we have seen before because it was rated in IMDb. So I know we had rated it. So it's a movie called Return to Me, and I think it came out in 2000. And it's a, it's a, it's a, ro a romance movie, but with a very interesting twist. And I cried, of course. The Dr. Hubs doesn't remember watching it. But it was really good. We ended up, we were, somehow last week in knitting group, we, were we ended up talking about it. And I was like, oh, I think I, I kind of remember that. And so I was like, oh, let me watch it again. And it was really good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Okay. I finished watching series four and I'm watching series five of Endeavor. I'm watching season two of Jessica Jones. I finished the mini series, The Defenders, and it was it was not for me. I mean, I watched it just in case there was something that I needed to know for when I jumped into season two of Jessica Jones, because that's where it fell time wise. But I I did not enjoy The Defenders at all. So I don't know if I would have enjoyed it more if I had watched the other three shows. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. um, but there you go. Um, okay, NCIS season 16, Ducky's new office. It's the bomb.com. He, they remade it over and he has like a walking desk and VR and like all these panels and beautiful things on the wall. It's just beautiful versus the storeroom it was before. I really liked it. Um, so the bad secretary of defense has a huge offshore account and Vance was being investigated to see if he was complicit. But he's not. So now he and Gibbs and the team can investigate the Secretary of Defense. Watching season five of NCIS New Orleans. Watching season 12 of The Big Bang Theory. Watching season 14 of Supernatural. Nick, who was the human that Lucifer took over. So Mark Pellegrino. But Lucifer's out of him now. But Nick tried to bring Lucifer back. And then Jack tried to kill Nick and possibly killed Mary. Dun, dun, dun. Like, it was like, Mary? Credits. Okay. Um, watching Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Blind Spot Season 4, Blacklist Season 6, and Trading Spaces Season 10. I have nothing to say about any of those. Listening to my favorite murder podcast, the Murder Squad podcast, David Tennant does a podcast with, Samantha B, who I don't really know um, or follow, she is does a show Full Frontal. So that's who was on the episode this week. What have you been listening to, Danny? Uh, Cabin Pressure and Drood and my playlist of French musicals. Awesomeness. All right. Well, I think then we're ready to move on to the next segment. <laughs> And now we're going to talk about our March, April, May, Sheepy Spring Owl. Uh. Uh, so this is an owl that runs from the 1st of March through the 31st of May. And it's for any project that you can convince, it, that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to spring. If you can't think of anything, you made it in the spring. Yes. Um, there are a couple main rules for this owl. The first is that no whips are allowed, so your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of March, and then finished no later than the 31st of May. Yep. And, oh, and that was left over from my coffee. <laughs> um, the other is that each product of at least 20 yards that you finish and post in the FO thread counts as one entry into the giveaway, but if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group in a single post with other projects set together total at least 20 yards. 
Yes. Feel free to poly dip in other logs as long as it fits in with those other rules. That's totally fine, including the great podcaster Craft Together, which there is a link to in our show notes. We've got lots of lovely prizes on our screen right now. Thank you so much to our donors. If you are, yes. We have two new prizes. Oh yeah, that's what the yellow's for. Yes, so first up we have the Strawberry Blossoms Pattern by Monique Leonard, who is Windswept Monique, and you would get a copy of that pattern if you're the winner. And then we have the Spring Stitch Marker Set from Adore Knit on Etsy, donated by Jessica, who is Silver Luna 2112. That's the one I showed you uh, back in the yummies. Okay, on with the show, Dammy. Yeah. Um, if you are interested in donating a prize, you can PM a Java Pearl on Ravelry or email us at geekygirlsnet at gmail.com. And if you'd like to get closer looks at our prizes and see where they came from, you can go to our show notes, geekygirlsnit.com. You must or be a member of the... Or, 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 or tune into the first podcast of the month where we talk about them in detail. Yes, that. And thank you. Thank you to all the prize donors. I don't know if you said that. I can't remember. I did. I said it twice. Okay, well, I'm thanking them again. Love. Go ahead. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. Um, there is a hashtag if you'd like to tag your projects or post on social media. Um, the hashtag is GGKSpring19. The FO thread is going to be locked on the morning of the 1st of June, Then winners will be drawn on the podcast after that. Um, any winners will have 30 days to claim their prizes, or they will forfeit it. There's a chatter thread on Ravelry. Ravelry, good lord, where you guys can... I'm losing my words. Post progress and encourage each other, and it's where I give shoutouts to people who finish projects. But I also do it here, so I'm going to do that right now. Yay, dammy. Oh, okay. DG White, Elsa and M, Jodadaya, Curse S, Knit Central, Knit Princess 83, Knitter Chow, Mystery Sewer, Nicole S, Wes Strauss, Shared 2014, Wombat Knitter, and Yellcat 2. Great job, yeah. everybody. You have about a month and a half. Wait, eight, no, March of You have about a month and a half to finish your projects. So keep working on them and get them posted. My brain was thinking, because we just talked about the April, May, June RAL. And so my brain got confused. This is actually March, April, May. So, all right. Mm -hmm. I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girl. So part of our show, you ask us things and we try to answer them. Yes. What is this week's question, Nami? This week's question comes from Jane, who is Janie B. from London. Which of your projects have you enjoyed knitting the most, and which do you enjoy wearing or using the most? I asked a similar question, which you answered three years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Just wondering if it had changed. Um, so something that I really enjoyed knitting was this solar system that I made for our friend Noah. I can't remember which birthday I gave this to him. I gave this to him as a present for maybe four. Fifth? Maybe. I want to say it was fifth. But yeah, so maybe. I made a little solar system with all of with the sun and all of the planets and all the dwarf planets and our moon. And yes. he really yeah. loved it. And I'm gonna, I was just going to say, I'm linking all of these projects that we're talking about in the show notes. So if you want to go make your own, you can. Yes. Okay, what, uh, what else, Dammy? Um, another one that I also enjoyed knitting because it was just nice and fun was, um, let's see. Um, oh, it was the sample for your pattern, I'm in love with an 18th century Scotsman cowl. And she it named just, it something else. Super Secret Outlander Project Deuxième Prise, which means second, second something. Something. Second something. Um, but yeah. I loved this one because we got to take the, the pattern photos in a castle. Yeah. Uh, take two. Second take. Oh, second take. Okay. Yeah. So I love that we were in a castle and took the photos and they just turned out so amazing. Um, so this pattern has 
thistle lace in the middle with thistle cables along mm -hmm. both edges. And it, oh, I love it. It's one of my favorite things that I've designed. So, okay, what else, Dami? Um, and one that I enjoyed making, and I enjoy wearing it, I just haven't really, because it's kind of heavy, yeah, um, yeah. is the Watson sweater I made, which was inspired by Sherlock. Yeah. 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 I love it. It's amazing. Cable-tastic. Wonderful. Our turn. I could have actually gotten it out of your closet and showed the actual thing, but I didn't. So, okay. What project I enjoy knitting the most? All of my socks. All of them. All of them. Whether they're for me or for someone else, I love them. So I put, the link that I put in the show notes is to my um, tab in my project pages that have all of my socks that I have knit. I love knitting socks, especially on Zoom Zoom needles because they're so fast, especially plain vanilla. I, 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 I like pattern socks and they have a place and a time, but this is like my, I can knit this anywhere thing. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love it. Okay. Things that I both enjoyed knitting and wearing. Let's start with the most recent thing that I did. And I've worn this so many times this autumn and winter. The, my A Walk in the Park cowl, which is a design that I did. And it's designed such that you can actually twist it up three times, two times, or you could do three. I'm going to do three right now. But, um, and it's a tube. So you do a provisional cast on. And then it, you knit it as a tube so you don't have to weave in all the ends. And then you graft it at the end. And I adore it. I have worn it so much. And it's just, I love it. Mm -hmm. I just love it so much. Um, another one is one of the last things that I made while we were living in Scotland. It's called the Joss Wrap. So it's got a point on this end that is striping. And it, and then you get to this lace section and then more stripes and more lace. And it's an intarsia project. Um, and I just love it. And it's so big that I can just like wrap up in it. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. And Danny took a, a picture of me at the, um, which museum was that Danny? The National Museum of Scotland. Yeah, at the National Museum of Scotland. And then for my birthday, you drew a picture of that photo. Oh, and yeah, I, have I did do that, didn't I? It's hanging above my desk, above Harrison Ford, yeah. my, bo my boyfriend. So, um, and then another one is the 100 Acre Wood Shawl, which, hello, Winnie the Pooh. So, you know, guys know I had to do this. Um, it's, so it's different sections of garter and lace and Pico bind off. Um, if I were to knit this again, I probably would choose a variegated that didn't necessarily have the solid color in it because my solid was, is this one right here, but my variegated also has that color. So in some spots, it looks a little muddy, but I don't care. I love it, and I love to wear it, and it's fantastic. And then the last one is my Neon Beast. And it's so big and so huge and so colorful. Mm -hmm. And stripes and goodness. And I love it. And it's so big, and I can just wrap up in it. I tend to love things that I can wrap up in. Or something that will keep me warm, but not too warm. Does that make sense? So, so I linked all that in the show notes. So thank you so much to Jane for the question. This was a really fun one. I'm actually curious what our answers were three years ago. I may have to go hunt that down and see. Uh, because like some of this stuff I hadn't knit three years ago. So mm -hmm. I would be interested to see. 
So, Dammy, in the rivalry thread for this episode, I'm going to ask people to share what project they've enjoyed knitting the most and what they enjoy wearing or using the most that they have made. I think that could be fun mm-hmm. to, to, to see what other people have done. So, and Dammy, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the, Geek, Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. And I think we're ready for the next segment. And now we have a review and giveaway. Well, technology is being a beast right now. Oh, okay. So y'all may remember when I went to Madrona a few weeks ago, one of the things I bought, well, two of the things that I bought were from the barmaids who does Lolo Bar. So I bought both a cuticle intensive stick that's like a, like kind of like a lip balm that you rub on your cuticles and then I rub it in when I put it on. And I'm loving mm-hmm. this. It's making my cuticles not so dry as they were. And then I also bought the Winter's Bliss, which I love comes with a quote in the big one for the body one. Sorry, it's not wanting to come out. There we go. See, you can tell that I've been using it. And I love how it smells. And I actually I had to open it because I couldn't remember what what all scents were in this. But Winter's Bliss is vanilla, mulberry, evergreen, and peppermint. Does that sound amazing? It is awesome. So um, when I, while I was there, I gave them one of our cards and was like, hey, do you want to ever do a review giveaway thing? We'd love to do it on the podcast. And they said, yes, we would, and sent us a box of stuff. So just making sure, full disclosure, I bought the two things that I just showed you because I love them. And I want more, and they're amazing. The prizes, the three sets of prizes we're giving away were donated by the barmaids. So just want to make that clear. So in order to enter to win, what you're going to need to do is go to our Ravelry group, and there will be a thread. And in that thread, you are going to tell us what scent you would buy if you were purchasing a Lolo bar. And there will be a direct link. And what you do is you click on that link, and once you get over to the barmaid's page, there is a... Uh, drop down that says bar scents and you click on it and you can see all of them and it tells you what's in them. Did you know, Dammy, there is a Mr. Darcy one? I did not know. What does it smell like? It's got black pepper, bergamot, pipe, and leather. Very interesting. Mm. And there, oh, there is a, um, I'm trying to see. Oh, there's a Highlander one that has dense thicket, pipe tobacco, bay leaf, and cedar wood. So some of these scents, and it, and it says actually are unisex, and some are seasonal, and they'll tell you also what the, the um, top sellers are and if there's limited quantities of some. So you click on that thing, and you can read through all the different scents, and then you'll end the Ravelry thread you will tell us which scent you would buy if you were purchasing. And we will draw for the three prize winners in two weeks when we record episode 342. One entry per person, must be a member of the Geek Girls and Ravelry group to participate. And you'll have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it and we will use it for a later giveaway. Is that all the stuff I need to tell them before I show them the prizes? I think so. Okay, so two of the winners are going to get these little, nice little pouches that include, they both have the bergamot lime deodorant, which smells Ooh. really good. Um, they both have the trial size of the face pudding. They're on your face. They both have the bling cherry Lolo lips. And then one of them has lemongrass. So this is the smaller size of the bar. So this is the big one. This is a smaller Mm -hmm. one. So this one, one of them will have lemongrass and the other one will have vanilla moon. I wonder, I want to see if there's anything else in vanilla moon or if it's just vanilla. It just says sweet, warm, slight citrus, fresh. 
is what it says. So those are two of the prizes. And then the third prize winner is going to win a big one of the Lolo bars in the Lavender Lil scent, which let's see if it says what here it is. It's peaceful and relaxing. Yes. Okay. As well as your little bag has a bar of the Come Clean Soap in the Lavender scent. Look how pretty it is. Beautiful. So it will be um, awarded at random because it's, it's too much of, um, it's, it's a little more difficult if we let people like choose which one they want. So mm -hmm. they'll just be awarded, awarded randomly. So we'll, we'll draw a number and I, 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 it depends on how my brain is working, but probably what we'll do is first person who we, we draw, will get one of the sets. Second person will get one of the sets and the third person will get the body size and the soap. Um, yeah, so that's probably what we'll do. So head on over to the Ravelry group, enter. Also go shop on their website because they have amazing stuff. I love their little cards. So I'll include mm -hmm. one of these in everybody's. So it's eco, eco luscious skincare. But on the back, it has this cute little thing that says where you can list your favorite scents, your favorite lip balm flavors, what are your must haves, and then it gives information about them. This is made, this is handcrafted in the Pacific Northwest. They are in, I can't remember. Uh, they are based out of, let's see what it says on the website, Vancouver, Washington. Um, and then all of their, how to stay connected. So thank you so, 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 so much to the barmaids for sending this our way. We hope that um, y'all will enjoy this giveaway. And yeah, we will announce the winners in two weeks. If you have any questions, let us know. And thank you, barmaids. All right, let's move on to the next segment. We made it to the end of the show. Yay. Thanks for making, for hanging in with us, even when technology is a beast. Because we definitely wanted to continue to podcast when Dammy left for college. And this is the only way we can do it because it would be so cost ineffective for me to go over to Seattle every week to record. That's just, that just, we just can't make that happen. So um, we're doing the best we can and those fun times when Dammy's home and we can record make that, that makes them even more special. So, I don't think we have any announcements, Sammy. Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. So, um, we want to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports the podcast, however you do it. Watching, commenting, liking, loving, thumbs up. Uh, participating in the read-along, participating in the owls, participating in giveaways, etc. But a humongous thank you, especially to those of you who support us financially. We love you guys. Because it, unfortunately, it does cost money to do a podcast. So, for example, when we draw these prize winners for the barmaid stuff, we're going to have to pay the postage to ship them. That's just, you know, when we do prizes for the, for the seasonal owls, we have to ship them out. So that's, that's one of the costs, technology stuff, etc. So thank you to those of you who support us financially. If you would like to support us financially, there's three main ways you can do that. My headphone just died, so I'm not going to put the other one in. We're just going to run with it. So there's three main ways, as I was saying, that you can support us financially. The one, the main one is Patreon, which is a site where you can pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, and you earn rewards based on the level you donate at. I sent out rewards for April today, or not today. This past week. I think I did them maybe on Friday. Anyway, they're done. They've been done. Some, they got done sometime between last podcast and today. And they've been sent out. So if you're expecting something, it should be on its way to you. And Dami, if somebody would like to know more about Patreon or want to sign up, 
what should they do? Go to patreon.com slash geeky girls knit. That's right. What's another way, Dammy? There is a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation. And we are amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you're going to purchase something on Amazon, if you go to our website first and in the sidebar or at the bottom of the show notes, there are links, images and links to each of those three Amazon sites. Click your appropriate one, shop, doesn't cost you anything extra, and we get a little bit back from Amazon based on what you purchase. Um, and it's a great way to support us by doing something you would be doing anyway. Also, mm -hmm. just, I, we, we've said this before, but just, just saying it again, the links in the show notes that like to the books we're reading, the TV we're watching, all that, the links that you can click on in those link lead you over to amazon.com. So um, that's another way. If you're doing amazon.com, you can do it that way. So, um, Dammy, why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There, there are links to everywhere else we are online, YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. I still haven't decided if I'm going to change my Ravelry name. I don't know. If I, if I change it, I'm going to change it to, to CC underscore Almond. I think I can do that. Do they let, under, do they let underscores in? I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know either. If not, CC underscore Almond, then CC Almond is what I would do. Hmm. I'm still debating on that. I will let you know. So, um, yeah. We hope you all have a great rest of your week and that allergies aren't knocking you down too much. Allergies have been a beast up here um, the last week or so. So take care. And we hope that you will have a lovely, lovely knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, and other crafty goodness until we see you next time. Bye. Bye. Come on, technology, I'm sending you pom-pom energy. Work, work, work. Pom-poms, pom-poms. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> pom-poms are awesome. I love pom-poms.